So as you're solving problems through the physics book, depending on what chapter you're in, you're going to have to deal with vectors. In fact, you're going to have to deal with the vectors a lot. What if I told you there was a strategy you could use to solve any problem that dealt with vectors, and if you at least used it, you'll get halfway through the problem? Would you want to know what it is? Okay, so let's learn it. It's called the five steps. I got the term from a physics book I used to use, uh, and it was by Holiday and Resnick. The five steps go like this. Step one, choose a coordinate system. Step two, identify your vectors. Step three, break your vectors into their X, Y, and Z component. Step four, add like components. Step five, find the resultant or the equation of motion. It doesn't matter if you're in the first four chapters where you're dealing with Newton's laws or projectile motion, or you're in like around chapter 23 where you're dealing with electricity and magnetism and you're back to those vectors. The five steps are what you can use to solve those problems. Okay, let's do a Newton's law problem using the five steps. So let's start with something very simple. So we have a block on a plane with a force being applied to it. A common question might be, what is the motion of the system? Or what is the system's acceleration? Now you'll notice that I'm not using numbers. And I've known for years, students love to say, well, I need numbers to solve the problem. Because for some reason, when they don't have numbers, they think, oh, this must be hard, it's theoretical. Believe it or not, it's easier when you don't use numbers. Because if you're going to write a number down, you have to write down the units. That takes time, it takes effort. But if you do the formulas, you're doing exactly what you're doing with the numbers and you have to write a whole lot less. Save the plugging in of the numbers to the end of the problem. Remember that and I think you'll really be happy. So let's get back to the problem. We're going to use the five steps to solve this problem. So step one, choose a coordinate system. I look at the problem and I see that it's on a horizontal surface. I'm going to choose an XY coordinate system. Step two, identify your forces. Well, a lot of your books say, draw a free body diagram. Well, guess what? Drawing the free body diagram is step two. You're identifying your forces relative to your coordinate system. So, how many forces are acting on the object? If you ever have a problem figuring out how many forces are acting on an object, ask this simple question. What's touching it plus gravity? Well, the ground is touching it, so that provides what's known as a normal force. There's applied force being added to it, so we write F applied. I don't see anything else touching it, so I just add gravity, or the gravitational force. That's all the forces. So now that we've identified our vectors, in this case our forces, we can go to step three. Add, or oh, break them into their x and y component. But the nice thing about this problem is, they're already resolved in their x and y components. So, Step four, add like components. So the sum of the forces is equal to, or sum of forces in the x rather, F applied. Are there any more arrows on the x-axis? No. Then that equals ma. Then the sum of the forces in the y direction. Because remember, we're adding like components. Now we're doing the y component. So 
all I have to do is look at my arrows that are going up and down. If they're up, they're positive. If they're down, they're negative. So, normal force minus mg equals, now, it, it does equal ma, but here's the thing. If it's sitting on a surface and it's not jumping off the surface or falling through the surface, then it's always zero because A refers to the acceleration. And since we're dealing with the acceleration on the y-axis, it's not moving in the y. So we know this is equal to zero. And for most of the problems you're going to get, it's going to be zero. But you'll get that through experience. So now, if we need to know the motion of the system, we know it's going to be moving to the right. So we solve for the x component. F applied equals m a. Find the resultant or the equation of motion, which is step five. The equation of motion, divide both sides by m. So f applied divided by m equals a. Now, plug in your numbers if you were given any. If the problem was purely theoretical, this is where you'd stop. The system will accelerate by the um, force applied to the object divided by the mass of the object. Let's try a couple of harder problems in the next video.